welcome to Crypto Mastery Class. This is where we make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We're going to look over the news, the overall market today, hot movers in the basket, look at the indicators, and most importantly, question and answer. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and we have Joe, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators on us. So he will be taking live questions. So let's start today with some great news. Crypto has found a floor thanks to Ethereum merge, JP Morgan. This is by Chris Williams on CryptoBriefing.com. JP Morgan cited Ethereum's pending proof of stake upgrade as a key driver behind the recent market recovery. Ethereum is up around 90% from its June low. The worst of the pain in the crypto market may be over, according to JP Morgan. In a Monday note to clients, the investment banking giants analyst Kenneth Worthington said that the market may have found a floor. The note cited the decline in trading volumes and $40 billion Terra collapse, but noted that the spillover effects from the blockchain's now infamous DPEG event had been fairly limited. An excerpt read, it appears that the crypto markets have found a floor despite trading volumes still being depressed. What has helped, we think, has been more limited new contagion from the collapse of Terra Luna. The once legendary crypto hedge fund, Three Arrows Capital, Venture Titan hashed, and a slew of major crypto lenders, including Celsius and Voyager Digital, were all hit hard after Terra Luna token crashed to zero in May. Three arrows defaulted on a series of uncollateralized loans after Terra imploded, prompting a series of bankruptcies. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the rest of the digital assets market plummeted after Terra's fall, sending the global cryptocurrency market capitalization below $1 trillion for the first time since January 2021. However, after hitting local lows in late June, Many assets have since bounced as confidence returns in the market. Ethereum has put in a particularly strong performance as anticipation builds for its merge to proof of stake. According to CoinGecko data, Ethereum dropped below $900 on June 18th and currently trades at that $1,700, up around 90%. All the Ethereum adjacent projects like Optimism and Lido have also soared as hype for the merge intensifies. JP Morgan said that the merge was the key factor behind the market bounce. The note said, we think the real driver has been the Ethereum merge and positive data following the launch of the Sapolia SIC testnet in early July and Ropston testnet in June, indicating the merge is viable in 2022. Ethereum's final merge testnet and Giorgi is expected to go live tomorrow while the main net is tentatively scheduled for mid-September. The note said that a successful launch should improve sentiment in the crypto market. In the lead up to the merge, Justin Sun and others have hatched plans to fork the Ethereum blockchain to preserve a proof of work network, defying widespread support for the proof of stake upgrade within the Ethereum community. While several exchanges have launched tokens for a potential proof of work fork, market demand is lacking so far. So the next article I want you guys to know about is Ethereum price analysis. Ethereum pivots at 1,800 swiftly retraces by Lappin on Cryptopolitan.com. Ethereum price analysis is bearish today as we have seen a strong higher high set for 1,800 and a consolidation that turned into a break lower over the past hours. Therefore, we expect Ethereum USD to retrace further and looks to decline below 1,680. The market is traded in the red over the last 24 hours. The leader, Bitcoin, lost 4.46%, while Ethereum 5.98%. Meanwhile, the rest of the top altcoins have followed close by. Ethereum price movement in the last 24 hours, Ethereum breaks previous high. Ethereum USAD, USD traded between 1,700 to 1,800 
indicating strong volatility over the last 24 hours. Trading volume has increased by 111%, totaling 16.52 billion, while the market cap trades around 208 billion, resulting in a dominance of 18.93. On the four hour chart, we can see Ethereum price action trading with strong selling pressure over the past hours, indicating a break below 1,680 support will soon follow. Ethereum price action has traded with strong bullish momentum over the past few days as a new swing high was reached around 1,800. Ethereum USD moved into consolidation and swiftly broke past the 1,760 support. From there, Ethereum began to decline rapidly earlier today, leading back towards the previous local low of 1,680. Currently, bears are trying to break even lower, likely resulting in further selling pressure until the end of the day. Overall, we expect Ethereum price action to set another local high, another local higher low soon and begin setting a base for the next push higher likely above 1,800 resistance as the overall several week momentum is still bullish. And the last bit of the news is about Avalanche. Avalanche price analysis, AVAX declines 27.9 maintaining bullish dynamics by Narman on Cryptopolitan.com. Today's Avalanche price analysis shows a partial bearish trend gaining momentum with further bullish possibilities. AVAX USD is currently trading at 27.9, down 5.64% in the past 24 hours, with a trading volume of 800, 8, 856 million. The market cap yesterday in a crashing momentum and is opening today with hopeful bullish signs adding to yesterday's spike above the $28 mark. In addition, the volatility decreases, giving the bulls more opportunity for a tremendous comeback. The live market cap of AVAX is $7.9 billion, and it ranked 12 in the cryptocurrency rankings. AVAX USD, four hours analysis, latest development. Avalanche price analysis indicates market volatility following a decreasing trend, which means AVAX USD prices are decreasingly prone to fluctuating volatility. The Bollinger Band's upper limit is 29, which acts as the most substantial resistance for AVAX. Conversely, the lower limit for the Bollinger Band is available at 25, which serves as the most vital support for AVAX. The price of AVAX USD appears to cross under the moving average curve, significantly a bearish movement. As a result, bears have been taking care of the market for the last few hours and will maintain their momentum. However, the price appears to show increasingly dynamics by moving towards the resistance. The trend might soon shift to a positive one instead if the bulls play their cards right. And we're going to check out the overall market. So currently for the seven day market cap analysis, you can see the chart at the moment we're at $1 trillion. So I did a thick line at the 1.1 trillion so you can see how much over 1 trillion we've reached in the last seven days since we met last on last Tuesday. And I did a really light blue line on the 1.05 trillion mark so you can see where the market has bounced between those two significant places. But overall, we've stayed above one trillion for the last seven days. And here's the one week performance in a market cap block size for my visual learners on Coin360. You can see that the dark green, it means the price went up three steps. And you have the medium green, that means the price went up two steps. So Binance Coin went up 15% in the last seven days, thus earning the dark green shade of Coin360. And Ethereum went up 11.94% in the last seven days and earned the medium green block. And then you have Cardano ADA, which is light green. It means it went up 4.7% earning the uh, the light green. All right, one second, guys. We just had something happen where the, all right. 
sorry about that. There was something that popped up on my screen with GoToWebinar. All right, so let's go to the next one. We're going to use the CryptoMastery.online indicators now. So if you want to subscribe to these indicators, you would just go to the URL above, Crypto Mastery Online, and this is where you're going to have a deep dive tutorial videos explaining how to use the indicators and how to also use trading view so this is bitcoin usd one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators so on the upper right hand corner you can see we have average true range which for bitcoin right now it's saying that it's still in the downward direction the early reversal is below the average true range more to the left in the center of this chart and i have my arrow pointing down to the downward arrow now that came in weeks ago remember each one of these candlesticks represents one week so we're still waiting for the early reversal to come in green for the current time frame the next indicator below is the trend so it's very exciting that we have the key that came in in the last week and that means hey guys there's a key opportunity coming and um, if this particular upward trajectory maintains itself then you will see a bell come in but as you can see the line on the trend is still green so it hasn't gotten enough upward momentum to trigger the green upward trajectory line for the trend line and the third indicator down is the trend strength indicator and that's saying for the last four weeks we have been seeing some upward trending and it's still currently right above the green zone which would be more of the oversold zone so you can see that we still have a lot of room to grow to get to that ceiling which is very exciting for people that are in the acquisition stage for bitcoin then you have the fourth indicator down is the signal line and that's where you see the green dot that came in a week ago or so and the line went from red to green and then the last indicator you have is the volatility index and you can see on the right hand side I put the arrow pointing at 10.96. It's a very exciting time in my perspective for Bitcoin to be this low on the volatility index. I don't know how long this will last, but it's a beautiful time for people again in acquisition mode. It just shows that we're definitely on a floor and uh, we're definitely at low. We are low, low, low. And if you do look at past performance of Bitcoin with this indicator, you'll see it's very rare to get down on a one week analysis chart into the volatility index under 20. So right now we're at 10.96. And I'm about to show you the Ethereum slide. And just to give you an example, Ethereum is out of the red zone on the volatility index and you'll see it's over the 20 mark. So this is a key opportunity um, to for me, I'll say personally need to acquire uh, Bitcoin once I get a little bit more of these indicators all aligned. So here's the Ethereum. If you want to start down on that volatility index, let's put our eyes on there. I had just said the Bitcoin was at 10. Volatility index for Ethereum is at 20.34. So Ethereum is about to break out of that volatility index oversold zone. So if you go back to the top, you can see the average true range still has not switched to green. And the early reversal has not uh, come out yet saying, yes, we are definitely in an upward directory for that particular quant and mathematics that's being utilized to create those two signals. So we're still waiting on that to come in for more confidence in an upward more stable trajectory so the trend indicator which is exciting for ethereum the key came in a week and a half ago and then a week two weeks ago and then you had the bell come came in so let's see if that continues to go up on a one week average but so far that's looking good to me and the article previously said that they were even predicting more of a long-term upswing and then you have the tsi trend strength indicator so those green arrows up one two three four five shows for the last five weeks we've been upward trajectory Again, this is not in the oversold zone, in the upper blue zone, so there's still room to grow, which is super exciting. And go down to the signal line, you see that, that we had the green dot come in and you have the green line, so we're no longer in the red zone for the signal line, so that's a good check. And then again, the index, the volatility index, my favorite indicator to know that I'm getting something on super sale, I say, uh, it's at 20.34. So 
I like to scoop it up when it's in the red zone. Um, and uh, so it's getting, it, it, it's still, in my opinion, you know, very great low area, but uh, I definitely do not uh, buy when it's in the red, the green zone, which would be the 80 to 100 zone. It's more of a take profit zone for me personally. All right. So if anybody is in the acquisition mode, this will be an exciting time for you guys to decide when your risk tolerance will allow you to um, acquire more of these assets. So for the Crypto Mastery Group, the, these are the coins that have been selected for our specific basket. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these coins can be found on Coinbase. So we're going to look at some hot movers in the basket. And our basket for our live charts goes beyond that particular basket. So currently, I've gone through my charts and I found that what is trending up for the one day and the one week or these coins. But the change percentage you see on the right hand side is more of an intraday change percentage. So it's not reflecting the one day or the one week. And we'll go live in a minute here and we will organize our watch list and create a watch list so you know how to do this on your own. So let's just go over a quick thing. The watch list coins that are up for the moment, you can organize your watch list by percentage of change, the amount of change in price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready versus ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. And then these coins are up for the day, but I always look for the coins on the floor to be ready for my next low buy. So this is the crypto screener today. It was organized by Coinbase. So crypto screener Coinbase sorted by technical rating. So this is what trading view technical rating is saying is ready to be bought on Coinbase. But it's not financial advice as I trade using the charts and not by this rating solely. So this is just for educational purposes only. Just wanted to make sure that you're utilizing all the technology that you have at your fingertips with your TradingView account. So inside of the members area of Crypto Mastery, you'll learn more about how to utilize TradingView and how to use the indicators. So this is just a quick slide to show you that you could change your exchange name. So if you are outside of the United States and if you don't use just Coinbase, you can change the exchange to something that you actually do use. And then you could, this is the slide just showing you a little bit of what's in the members area, showing you how to use a crypto screener and all that will be in cryptomastery.online. So you can just subscribe above. And then here are some of the indicators that you get with Crypto Mastery. Volatility index, early reversal indicator, dynamic ATR, which is average true range, trend indicator, strength, trend strength indicator, radar screener, and the signal line. And inside the members area, you're going to see some of these slides, which will explain a little bit in depth as to what those indicators do. But to save time today, we are just going to jump in and look at the market. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the slides. So again, if you want to deep dive into those tutorials, you could go to CryptoMastery.online. So Joe and I are going to start and show you the live market right now. And I'm going to check the questions box to see if you guys have any questions or any specific coins that we can work with and show you. And uh, so far, we Joe, we have a question. Nicola says, Susie, can you please briefly explain how to find the average true range? Oh, she says, oh, OK, then the indicators. Don't worry about my previous question. All right, no problem. All right. So Joe and I were talking, guys. And Joe, jump on whenever you're ready. Sure. We uh, uh, hi, Susie. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, um, you know, I was uh, looking in here, and I just wanted to uh, uh, show one of the markets that are moving. Sure. If I go to uh, PLU, and this is on Coinbase. What's a new coin on Coinbase? 
Let me add that one one second. Hold on. PLU. Okay, great. All right, so I'm just going to code it really quick, guys, as green, and I'm going to move it up to my green zone. Okay, so we're live. I'm going to shut my Coinbase watch list down. Yeah, well, so it just if you came that, Yeah, because you take a look at a daily chart, this just started to uh, move within the last couple of days, and uh, we had the ERI, which triggered. That's great. Uh, so the early reversal indicator is right here, and it's where I'm. We're waiting for Bitcoin and Ethereum to get to this point on a one-week analysis. And so for PLU, I want you guys to let you know that the reason why the one-week chart was not really the best perspective of this is because this just got on Coinbase. It said in January 24th of 2022. So there's not enough data to really accomplish what we're looking for for the indicator technological mathematical configurations to be triggered to the most beneficial levels so when that happens and you still want to take advantage of this new coin on coinbase or a new coin in any exchange you're working with go down to the lower time frames okay go ahead joe i just want to explain to them why we had to go from one week to one day sure <clears throat> yeah and, and a lot of times what i do is and, and the way I found this, and this is for any of the, the new traders that we have with us, is that if you go over there to the crypto screener on the bottom left, yeah, yeah. and uh, if you can remove the columns and set it for Coinbase, well, not that one, that's the technical one. Oh, keep <laughs> that one on there? One. Yeah, that's the technical oh. one. <laughs> All right, all right. So, um, well, and if that happens, all you have to do is refresh, and then it it goes right, back so to default. Yeah, okay. So you want just so what once do you want me to leave, and that way I'll delete the rest. Uh, well, what's important here? is we just want the technical rating and the exchange. So we just want two okay. columns. Technical rating and the exchange? Yes. Okay. And I have it triggered for the, um, the green so so um all right so what we're going to do guys is we're going to go filter and you want me to just right here it says exchange we're going to go and i'm going to look for coinbase so that way now we're only going to see one day and it's on a one day chart do you want a one day or one week joe uh one day is fine okay now this technical analysis that they do is generic so this by itself really the information is um it's okay to have but it, it can be latent but when you use this information with the tools uh it's incredible because what it allows is is for you to uh track money flow and that's what you're doing here you're tracking money flow now another one that i found in here susie is ren btc would you want to just quickly show them where that one? So here's PL, you guys. It says strong buy Coinbase. And just because I want to just finish what you were showing them. So guys, what he did is he just took all those busyness um, mathematical calculations that TradingSpeed is doing. And then he went, he he splits his screen. Joe, is that okay? I know how you, how you um, analyze this stuff. He splits the screen so he can click on the particular coin and then the indicators like pop up up top and that's how that's how you found that right joe yeah that, that's exactly right and, and what you're doing is, is you're yeah. tracking money flow and, and he's looking but he's you're it just you were saying like you wanted to show this so that they know how to find it on their own so you go to crypto screen or eliminate those areas put in your 
particular exchange and then click on the ones that say strong buy, split your screen so you can see the indicator here. And that when he clicked on PLU USD, then you could see that the early reversal came in and that it, for the last three weeks it was moving up. And that is how you found that, right, Joe? Yes, that's correct, Susie. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I just want to make sure that you get that. And then the next one, the um, REQ. Now, now, what happens is when you go in here, right, ideally is, is that you're looking to try to catch something, you know, in the mist because you can be too late. Like if you go in here to REN, Susie, REN, BTC, right here. Yeah. Right. This is one here. Like you see that bell alert? Like you got the, let me just take you through this, right? Now, on this example here, what's most important is the ERI because the ERI is the early reversal indicator. And that right there gives us our early warning. So, you know, um, once you get that, that's the first clue of looking for, uh, you know, the additional confirmations with the tools. So first in here, we got the ERI. And the um, ERI came in lovely. And uh, can I just show you, see you that, that, how that, much it went up? Sixty-six percent in eleven days after that ERI came in. Yeah. Okay. And and you know, Susie, when you do these crosses, you know, because it, like this is Ren uh, Bitcoin, a lot of times you got to be ready to take your profit because those spikes, like you see how that candle looks today. It's, you know, it'll yeah. spike up there and you really just have to just take a profit because these markets are faster than the other coins. So um, I, I just take that from, I just from firsthand experience. But <clears throat> on this example here, we have the, first we had the ERI, which says yes. The second is we had the TSI. The TSI is one of the most important uh, um, oscillators or chart overlays. And we got that first uh, green dot down there on the green. So if you look on there, Susie, on July 23rd, we got the first green dot on that TSI and it was oversold. And it wasn't until later though, like when the signal line come into play, that the momentum started to come in from the, from the market. So in this case point, you know, we didn't get the volatility index. We only got out of the five, we only get three. But uh, the three that we got is what we needed to win because once we got the signal line, which is the second confirmation, next we're waiting for that bell alert. And the bell alert, Susie, just from that signal, if you would have waited for the bell alert, you would have uh, still done well. So ideally, yeah. it's to scale into your positions, 25, 25, 25, and then look to uh, look for the move to come to fruition. But um, the trend alert, if you wanted to, to just trade one indicator, one chart overlay, the trend alert is usually the last one to turn on. And uh, right now, we're on a number two. and. Um, See, and you see, when the market gets fast, Susie, it's always tough to get into it because, you know, look how fast it is. Like, usually when it's fast like that, sometimes you, you, you really have to be try to be patient to get in because if you get in at the wrong time, you can end up buying all the way up there at the top. And then you just have the bad luck of, you know, of, you know not utilizing uh, the tools properly. So it's important that you, can, you come in on that bell alert. And then look for that number count, you know, following. So let me see if I can find another one here. You know, and if oh, you're following along questions. with us, okay. Uh, so Rob says, can you tell me what happened to the MANA Ethereum potential trade from last week? So let's sure. Look at that.
Okay. Well, when we so, take a look at this. A look at the day chart. So here's the the one week, and then do you want to look at the one week or the one day? Uh, on the daily. Okay. You know, in the daily, um, every day the daily completes its bar, right? So last week when we were looking at this, I, I believe if you count back, Susie, it was probably like on the bell alert. And uh, if you noticed, it uh, went straight to that middle Kelter band and it failed. You know, I mean, the market could still move up right it has to break it's, that uh resistance right there because yeah but exactly where you have that you put that horizontal orange line it stayed within yeah. that so we did get that spike up but in addition to getting that spike up we also got a it looks like an eri a early reversal warning so uh and For that, the was one day. that was only eight yeah so it looks like in there the trade had some potential, but it held within that uh, resistance of the orange. And then yesterday we had an ERI, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, the, the trade can still develop, but it needs to get above that level. Now, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because what's interesting about this, Susie, is, is that uh, the Ethereum, and that was something we gave the news on. So let's say, Susie, if you were to, um, before we go off of this, if you take a look at the other chart overlays, I just wanted to point out the TSI. So the other clue that we have right now is that TSI has given us uh, a red. So we got an ERI, which says, hey, you know, this trade may not work out. Then, in addition to that, now we have uh, the first red. Now, what we do have in our favor is still that volatility index. But right now, um, as, as it is, it held right on that middle band. And uh, I was watching that, and I, I thought it was going to keep going, but, um, but it didn't. You know? Now, what's interesting is, Susie, if you switch the chart over to the Ethereum, and we'll stay on the daily, because I, I feel as though the Ethereum is at a critical level right now. So um, today, it, it's looking like the paint is starting to stop. Like, you see how that green paint is, Susie? on the trend indicator or chart overlay. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Well, and those, that, the fundamental article did describe that they think that it's gonna go down to 1600. Let's see where that's on the Bollinger Band. And look, we're above right here. So 1600 would be. And, you know, and, and that comes in probably right around that mil the middle Kelter band. Yeah. yeah. So if you're long this market, you want to take a profit um, or scale scale uh, downsides out of your position. And and Susie, if you go to the the uh, the TSI, let's take a look at that a second. Right, it looks like we're getting ready to get a red. You see? Now you remember, guys, this is the one day chart too. You know what I mean, Joe? Because the, the we could mm -hmm. look at the one week depending on you know how often they're buying and selling or trading. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's going to be under pressure right now. And, you know, some of the clues that I look for is really I look for the trend indicator to stop the paint. Like when as soon as I see it start to turn white like it is, that's a clue to me. Um, the TSI 
when I see it turn uh, red, that's an additional clue. Like I have my alert set for right now for that. Like that didn't go off or else I would have, you know, I, I would have shown you if I heard it <laughs> in the background. <laughs> you know, um, then that also the signal line, right? You see how like that's crossed and it's just slowly starting to lose momentum. You know, so usually when money, the money flow keeps shifting around and then the volatility index overbroad. So this has all the signs in there that we're going to probably uh, consolidate or pull back, definitely scale out of positions or, or take profits and uh, look for another opportunity or stand on the sidelines and let the market come to you because it can always be a, a quick spike down or what have you. Um, but right now, uh, I'd, be lo I'd be looking in there for uh, this thing to pull back a little bit. So maybe that article. I just want to make a point. Remember when the, the article said that back in June, you're on June 18th, the price went down to $800. Well, there you go. June 23rd, it looks like it was $743. So anybody that's been holding this for 47 days, they're sitting at 70% increase in their investments so they're probably ready to take some profit get ready for the fall <laughs> and knowing with what the articles were saying yeah all right there, there was another go ahead go ahead yeah so you know i don't uh i would say in here is is that the the, the mana is going to move uh, most likely, the, the way the mana is set up, it may be leading right now. It's, it'll be interesting what happens in, in over the next week with both of these. But if anything, I would be scaling out or um, downsizing positioning and, uh, and and letting the better setup come to play. So Rob had a question. Was there an entry? If not, why? If so, did you exit? Well, look, there and was an entry, okay? The entry, you can see in here at the uh, bell alert, Susie. Right here. Yeah, and the market did start to move. Now, we did have an ERI, and that printed on the 8th, but the market hasn't really moved up or down it's still at that same price level and, and that may happen sometimes it, it just may just get stuck so the next question was i noticed volatility indicator red black green is a good indicator on the four and daily can you comment So oh, well, again, if I you change it, it, well, change it to a four-hour chart. And in a four-hour chart, meaning every four hours, it prints a bar, Susie. And the cycle is a little bit faster here on the four-hour. So on the four-hour chart, you can actually see where it broke the uh, ATR, which is their average true range. And that's also like your final cutoff point. If we touched base on that last week. So that's their, the average true range. Within the average true range going down, then you have the early reversal coming in. Yeah. Now, uh, so that usually that when that when that kicks in, that's usually finito, right? And if you put a vertical line, Susie, right there at the ATR, like look at all the things that when you know come in synchronicity from the point that that happened. Like we got the uh, trend, which 
sold off more the color stock we got the tsi which gave the red we got the cross and the signal line and we got the move down on the volatility so what happens is is that a majority of the times the atr because that's tracking and, and see look you got to understand what makes that special what, what makes that special is the way it does the calculation it keeps uh, adjusting the calculation depending on the market range hence the name average true range so it's different than the other chart overlays that don't use that type of calculation to determine in here price levels. So being that that's able to synchronize itself up to the market, when it breaks that threshold, it's, uh, it's a release. And, and that's what you're seeing there. You're seeing a release where it is that you notice how the market didn't go up since it broke the ATR, it just went lower, let's call, it, let's call it lower lows. Like it just had lower lows since that point it broke it. You know? And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. It was, like, it was actually probably like a little bear pennant. And then it started to come up. So Rob, um has has is zoning in it sounds like on the color of the candlesticks in the early reversal indicators so if you notice this is when last week around the third when we were looking at this when the early reversal came in then you notice the candlestick gets green and overbought and immediately goes into the downward spiral so people are taking profit the profit from the nine day where the early reversal came in was only 6.3 percent but you can also use that as an indicator to say, ooh, screen, it's, it's in the overbought zone. And you can see that it took the adventure from the oversold to the overbought, and then bam, you have a little mini ceiling. Um, I, Rob is great with the questions today, so I wanna say thank you. He says, Ethereum USD and Bitcoin USD, I can really see entry and exits on the four hour and daily using the red or green. So Jerry, are you okay if I pull that one up so he can? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. So everybody can see what Rob's talking about. So guys, just so you know, we're working on a four hour chart right now. So this is the Ethereum USD four hour chart. And Rob is saying, I can really see entry and exits on this one. So Rob is, I would say, maybe intraday trading potentially. So if Rob followed these indicators or if say you did, um, you got in down here, that would be August 4th and you got off right here. That's 4.78% in 16 hours. Um, these are all black. So it's not like you're, you're getting in on the red zone. So here, this is the good one. When, when you see the red candlestick, it's oversold. Joe, do you want to comment on this? Well, I just basically say is that when you see it, you know, um, when it starts to trend, you favor an error which way it's trending with the Kelter bands. So as long as we're trading greater than, than that middle band, Susie, then that means we're trending in that direction. You know, it, it just so happens that now we're right to the uh, the lower end. But that the last ERI on that was on point. That looks like that was me on, on Friday. This one right here. Yeah. So you guys, yeah, I was on point. Like and and like what happens is is that the math works better in some markets than other markets. It's just how it works. You have to find something in there that's consistent, and it really depends on how the market trades. Like some of these markets, they're thin, um, so so they just move they move fast, but they might not be practical when it comes to trading them. And then you have like this market here is very liquid, and uh, I I like the Ethereum. Yeah. So let's look at the um can we look at the BTC USD in the four hour just to go to the next 
one Rob commented on. Wow. Look at this last entry down here. So again, guys, this is the four hour Bitcoin USD chart on Coinbase. So entry and at this point, the entry stopped here, but look how high it got to there. So in two days and 20 hours, it went up 14.91%. Uh, you know, we definitely have the swing, but do you see how it is right now, Susie? It's in trouble. They yeah, broke right. that ATR. Yeah. So, like, you know, just to say where, how I would interpret this, where it's at now, right, Susie? Um, well, first bring up the other chart overlays, right? Like, this is what I do, um, and if, you know, you're new and, like, you're following along, these are some of the, the little tricks that you can learn from me. One of the things, Susie, like on the left-hand side, you see the tools, right? If you choose on one of the tools, there's a vertical line. Yeah. Okay. And then I put that vertical line right on top of the TSI on the first red dot. So if you go right there to the left on the first dot, yeah, right there. And basically, what that what this is called is is really level. So we set our level so that we can see in there which way the cycle is favoring with the TSI. And, and I always do this all the time because it just helps me understand where where I'm coming from, right? So right now, um, the Bitcoin has been three like each one of them red dots represents a day well we're on a four hour i shouldn't say that um you know there's uh there's there's only there's less four hours than there is in one day <laughs> but usually i'm on a day chart but um following uh where we're headed here is coming down here to that oversold area so right now and it doesn't matter if it's this market or any market you have to let the wave take its course. So if you're in the market and you're stuck, you have to survive this, right? Now, if you're not in the market and you were able to, you know, to uh, exit out or scale out, well, then you don't want to get in right away because if you get in right away, you're not really obtaining a better price. So what you want to do is, is let the cycle play itself out. Let the market come to you. It, it, this might not be ready until next Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, but you have to leave the, the, the dough, it, you know, in the oven so the cake will rise. So, so sometimes when, the, when you have markets that are in their down cycle, don't try to rush the cycle. Set your alert for the next green PSI and let the, let this market come to you and you'll meet up with success at that point. So um, the way it looks to me is, is that uh, we're, we're moving a little bit lower. Um, I don't know how far this thing's gonna go. I, I don't try to pick levels, but I do know that it just broke that ATR and it's hurt. It's gonna take a couple of days to, to repair itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it. You gotta put a band aid on that boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now now check this out. And this is why this is the great thing about the tools, is that even though this right here is in the midst of its its downtrend, right? If we if we were to just uh ch change that chart over, Susie, to the Zen Z E N U S D and change that to a daily. And this is something that I found as we're talking on, on the crypto screener, as we showed you earlier. So like if we're talking, we're going over stuff and you see a coin in there, I, I encourage you to, you know, mention it and I'll pull it up. Um, you got to uh, right click reset chart. <laughs> I'm trying to get that. Wow. Okay, great. All right. Very beautiful. There you go. And I just wanted to point out, 
is that a couple of days ago we got another ERI on this. So even though things were going down in Bitcoin for the last five days, it, when you're doing, when you have the tools in your uh, threshold, in your grasp as you do right now, just learn the game. And then the potential of what you can achieve is unlimited because there are more than one opportunity in the crypto that can be uh, rewarding um, at a given time in this business. So the whole key is is to survive. You, you never want to just go on all in one coin and then you, you don't have any more money to play with no more if you're wrong. You know, you, you come in proportionately and with these tools, you're bound to put yourself in a position where, you know, you're going to experience uh, the success. And, and you know, one thing that's great about when you experience success is something now that you have with you. Like nobody can take it with you. So you build on that success. And now you start to be come empowered by the technology and and that's what i aspire for everyone is you know to become empowered by these tools to manifest your desires um and it's possible i i've done it for myself and i've gotten better at the game but it, but you have to play the game to get good at the game so uh, and then also, Susie, if you look at the TSI with this, the TSI confirms. So conversely, you can, you know, take that vertical line. And if you look at the, it looks like the market moved right on the number three. And that's when we got the ERI. Because well, you can be in the market on the bell alert, but it doesn't, it didn't move yet. Like you might be in here and it might be consolidating. And then all of a sudden, boom, you get that, that new number. Because, like, on this example, we got the bell alert, and then she consolidated, right? Went sideways. And, and that's going to happen. Not every trade is going to be instant gratification. But as soon as you see the new the number count going back up to three and then four, oh, then that means, you know, th there's, something, there's something good that's going to happen. And what's good about it is, is that when the market starts to move and it gets fast like that, it's hard to get in it. That's that. That's the whole thing about trading is is that you, you got to buy low and sell high to make a profit, and, and and you have to be in it to to win it because when it's consolidating and then when it starts to move, if you start to try to chase this, you know it's uh, you know it's like driving without a seatbelt. It's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, a pivotal moment. Um I think I have to refresh my trading view. <laughs> it's like lagging. So let me go in a second. Wow. I don't so my computer is getting um getting persnickety. One second, um, to get back on trading view. There, there we go. Great, okay. So sometimes guys, trading view is, is cloud-based, so sometimes you just have to refresh your screens. Oh, let's see, I think there were some more comments. Um, so Nicola says, is ATR Joe's invention or is something that other traders use as well? Well, there's a generic ATR, but it won't look like um, the ATR that I have, right? Because ATR is, you know, there's, there's you know, there's, um, like inside, when it comes to the calculation, there's a generic calculation for the ATR. If you go and you Google it, you'll see uh, numerous ones come up. Now, inside that calculation, there's different conditions that you can add to it as a programmer. 
Now, as you see, what I have, all the tools in there are proprietary. That means that I, I added and changed and enhanced everything. So if I was making generic products, I, I would have put, you know, uh, steroids in the foods. <laughs> you know, so um, everything inside of the uh, RATR, the one that you have right there, it's different than the average ATR, um, uh, you know, within the calculation and then also the, the display. Thanks. Nicola, does that help you? And uh, there was another question. So, so I found so, another one, Susie. Oh, another great coin? Great. And yeah. then when, on the next coin, Nicola would um, like us to demo how to set an alert on the green dot of the TSI. So I'll jump in on that next coin and then maybe we can set an alert for Nicola to learn how to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, um, the coin was Adam BTC. I'm trying to, I was trying to like see if I can find like a, 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 a while you're doing that, Susie, like something that just triggered like what a, a ERI or something that we can look for the next couple of days while you're doing that. I feel like I can find something special. All right. So guys, I'll show you, uh, uh, I will show, because we have only have like five minutes left. So Nicola, I'll show you how to set an alert um, on the TSI. So, oops, thanks. yep. All right. So you just, I'm on a Mac, so I'm double tapping on my um, my laptop, but I also have uh, a mouse. So, but you can just say, I just double tap to get this screen to show up, and I'm going to click Add an Alert, and then I'm going to just say what it is. So I'm on a one day chart. So I'm just going to tell myself in this alert name what it is that's happening. So when the email comes to me, I'm going to copy that alert name and paste it in the message because personally, I don't really talk to myself like the TSI crossing 59. I'll leave that there, but I'm going to put a name for myself. So I'm going to say, uh, but the TSI, I'm going to tell myself by Adam. BTC one day, I'm going to one day TSI moving upward. Whatever you need to say to yourself so that you know what this is triggering you to want to do. So I'm going to paste there. And then on a Mac, if you want to get your emojis, you do control command space bar and your emojis will come up. So I'm going to give myself a little uh, green dot just to remind myself to move up. So that message is going to get emailed to me. I'm going to see it. I've got send email checked, show pop up, notify on app. So if I've got the app on my phone, if I've just got a computer open to TradingView, it's going to pop up on the screen here, and it's also going to send me an email. And then I'm going to click create. This always pops up. I just click continue anyways. And then what happens is it's in my alerts. And one thing that's important about the alerts is I have a lot, and it, depending on the account you have, depends on how many you can have. Um, I'm just scrolling down to see. See, this one stopped, and so I need to click play to restart, and now it says active. And this one stops, so I'm going to replay it. So that's just something that the super duper trading view account will keep the alerts going after they've been triggered but these ones you would need to continue to press play on so that you keep getting them once they have that one expired so that just gives you an idea and that's what the alert area is okay. Let's see rob said thank you susie and drew great info and tips okay we've got a lot of comments joe nicola said sounds fabulous thank you Nicola said, I should know, but have forgotten. Nicola said, the thing Joe said was set alert for the next green dot. 
how do we know when the next green dot is going to happen? Example, what value will prompt the green dot? So, Joe, do you want to explain the technicality between behind that alert and how you program that so that she can understand uh, why the alert happens on the next dot, even though you're doing it on a, you know, on a previous dot? Well, the the the, um, the alert is going to uh, populate, but it really depends on what chart you're on. Like if you're, for example, if this was in right in the middle of crossing, I mean, it's not right now that you can see the TSI is just about to come together. But if it was right in the, in the middle of crossing and I try to set this alert, this alert is going to keep going off. And it's because the alert is reflective on what time frame you're on. So. If you're on uh, a daily chart and you set the alert for the daily and it just so happens that today's the day when it's crossing, the alert may just keep going off because it's in the process of crossing. Um, and the daily chart doesn't complete its bar to the end of the trading day. So depending on what time frame you set the alert on is going to be the frequency of the alert. So if someone is wanting to focus on one market, do you recommend them getting or setting the TSI alert for one hour, one day, one week, one month, so that well, it, they're it goes getting alerted? What, what type of, it, it goes on to what type of uh, risk tolerance level or what type of trader you want to be, how active. I mean, because that's what all these charts are, is like surfing and you have a wave. Like, for example, we have this Adam... Bitcoin. This is a monthly, right? But if you, let's say we go to the four hour chart, Susie. Okay. You know, the four hour chart is actually um, a good chart, right? And it, it's right before actually you get to the daily. Now, if you, when you're on the daily and you have your alert set, and then the market starts to go and you're triggered, that alert is in play. So the best thing you can do is go in here to a lower time frame. I, I, I use the four hour a lot. And then now set an additional alert. Um, you know, because this there's two cycles. You got the big cycle, which is the big wave, which is on the daily. And then you have the smaller wave, which is on the four hour chart. Now ideally is, is, is that we want to be in alignment, whereas that the daily says yes, and we're in on the four hour, it says yes, and there's, let's say, 24 hours in the day, and 10 hours of that day, the market goes straight up and we're in it. The, the other 12, 12 hours to finish the day, or 14 hours, the market could be going down, right? So it's basically two cycles. One cycle is the daily, and the second cycle is the four hour. And and um, and that's what I, I, I look at it as kind of like surfing. So if we can have both in our favor, it's going to be a great trade. And, uh, and Susie, like for this example, if you see the date that that ERI went long, Right there. What date was that? I'm gonna get guys to get those. Uh, I got my phone on. Second. Sure. Wait. Do you mean like I'm on the one day? Do you want me to go back to the four hour? No. no first, July. let's go to the daily. But I want you to stay on the daily, and I just want to show what date it was when the ERI triggered. August. Looks like August fifth. Oh, okay, right here. I'm sorry. I was looking at the all true range. Okay, so this particular one, August 3rd. Yeah, August 3rd. So now let's take a look at the four hour chart on August 3rd. Okay. Right. Well, so uh, it says. 
once your alert is triggered on your daily, this right here is going to be what's most important in play. And um, and sometimes it may not look perfect like it does right now. I mean, because it looks perfect. Um, what meaning is is that the T that the T we got the ERI that day, and then the TSI came in, and then it looks like the trend came in. You know, sometimes the volatility yeah. index isn't going to always be, you know, trolling the you know the ocean down there, down there in the red all the time. But that's why you have to have more than one so you don't miss the move. Yeah, this is great. I mean, boom, one, two, three, four, and then suddenly, you know, so ultimately this is a four hour range. So one, two, three, four, within that one day, everything, well, everything was triggered, signal line trigger, triggered, the trend strength indicator triggered, and then the key on the trend triggered. I would say all stars are aligned other than my favorite volatility index, which is a great example to justify why I get super excited to know that Bitcoin is down in that volatility index at a 10, because this is another example is why that's very rare. You don't really always see things down in the red zone. So we're, we're out of time. I'm so excited you guys were talking. Julia said, why would you want to set TSI at 59? So what she's saying. Well, I mean, is, I mean, look, you you could set the TSI for, for different values. You could, right? But if you have it set at crossing it, it takes the default. Right? That might have been a mistake right there. I don't know. What, the 59? Yeah, the default that is fifty. No, that's oh, okay. a default. Okay. Well, okay. Well, well, then that's the whatever the default is for that at value. Like if you click cancel, and then you go back to reset it, whatever that default is. Oh well, it's, you know what? It all has to do with where you click on the TSI. I think. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, TSI. Let's say I click. Let's see if I click down here in the green zone, add alert. So it's, so Joe, the TSI, let me just pull this up a bit. The indicators is t setting it at wherever you click on that chart. So there, the default is wherever you actually click. So 4.2 is where I clicked to create that alert. But you so know, what do you I do is. Them? Well, well, right now, even though you're you're clicking there, it's it's trading on the default, which is the cross. But what I'll do is is that I'll add in there something to clarify that, like a nice little green dot for us. So then that way they're, they're you know it's a little bit more clear clarification, more transparent on setting the alert because inside of the code it should automatically right now take it on the next cross. That's how it populates. But I can put an additional. Uh, tag in there and uh, next week you know get it over to you guys and we'll go over it next week thanks so much all right just a few more comments hope that helps julia nicola said thanks that was the next green dot that i just don't see how to anticipate nicola said okay so i will recognize a green dot by crossing up command but it might not catch the first green dot question mark Well, that what we'll do is, Susie, we'll do an example on that next week, right? Okay. And uh, I'll make an adjustment in there to the cloud, and then that way there, you know, um, you know, we can go over it with everybody. Okay. Okay. So week thirty-three, we'll do a TSI indicator. Julia said yes. That is why I was asking that, and Nicola said yes, please and thank you, Joe. All right, guys. Well been a great day and I think that you guys got a lot out of this class and understanding how to utilize the technology that you you've got access to so thanks Joe for creating it and we look forward to seeing you guys next week Joe is there anything you want to say at close um, good luck trading and talk to you guys next week
I guess. Thank and you. if you have just seen this first and go to that URL below in the questions box or the comments to get your indicators. All right. See you guys next week.